Hey everyone and welcome to week five of our Hidden Potential online Bible study. My name is Kendra. We know who this is. Her name is Weepo. She is a dear friend of Weepo, ours. That's right. Right? It was natural. It rolled right it, it off rolled, the tongue. I saw. We, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. Yeah, yeah. it just felt very natural. Yeah. And so everyone, <laughs> I'm so excited for Wendy's teaching today that we're going to hop right in. And I will say, Wendy, the question you're talking through today is, do my faults exclude me from God's plan? And this is one that I have struggled with a lot because growing up, I thought if I chose one wrong step or if I took oh. one wrong step, then I was out of God's will yes. and out of God's plan. Yes. So I'm very excited for you to oh, talk about wow. this today. Well, I think it's important that we start right away with um, knowing the difference between the fault and the frailty. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I want to just back up a little bit to last week mm -hmm. and remember that a frailty is something that is part of us. Um, either a circumstance, like we read with Meg, she grew up in a home where she didn't get an education. Right. So she didn't have anything to do with that that was upon her. Um, something she, she could have changed mm -hmm. and still can. She's still young enough to change yes. and go back to school if she wants to do that. But we saw how God used that even though she, and hopefully they listened to her testimony. Yes. Uh, the voice, the audio, that was right, I forgot we had, um, that, that went out last week. Um, but it's something that she could have changed, but mm -hmm. has chosen not to. And God has used, she has surrendered that to God. Yeah. And God has used her in a mighty way and continues to do so. But the fault is a little bit different. It's something that's a part of us mm -hmm. that can control us if we allow it. Okay. All right? And a fault is, it's, um, it's very, it's, 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 it's flirting with, mm. okay, this is just who I am. So this is how God made me. Right, you right? identify with it. Exactly. Yeah. This is just, like, we give ourselves excuses. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, my mama was that way. My, my mama's mama was that okay. way. My mama's mama was that way. You know, for mm -hmm. example, um, we had this long history in our family of being CBS soap opera aholics. Okay. Ah, yes. I used okay. to watch General so, Hospital oh, after yes. school. So you were ABC. We were we were rivals. <laughs> but okay, so here's the thing is we would my mother would watch it. We would go to my grandmother's house. She would be watching it. And we would be eating, I promise, Kendra, lunch at my grandmother's table with the aluminum legs. She never got a different table. <laughs> aluminum <laughs> legs and the little plastic Oh, top. yeah. And we would be eating our lunch, looking at, you know, to see what was happening in Genoa City or Springfield or whatever we happened to be watching. Right. Okay, so, so I grew up watching these shows, mm -hmm. thinking everything was okay. This was just something very normal. But right. then it was something that after I dove into God's Word and I allowed God's Word to start shaping me, I realized it was something that wasn't good for me. Right. Nothing wrong with it for other people, but for me, it just wasn't something God wanted me to right. put into my life at that time. So I believe that that's a way that we view ourselves when we get to... Also, here's another thing. This just made me think of this. We get to a certain age. It's like, oh, well, I'm 30. I can. Oh, yeah. I'm 40. You just kind of like give yourself an excuse exactly. to do something, right? I'm 50. Right? I'm just too old to change now, right? Uh -huh. And that's the way we look at things. But we have to look at our life in through the lens of God's Word. Perspective. Perspective. Yeah. I love that word. Um, so, for example... The more time you spend with God and the more time you spend in His Word, we've talked about this already some during our teachings, um, the more it kind of gets on us. It gets in us mm -hmm. and it starts like gnawing away at us, yes. right? And one of the things that was the Holy Spirit brought to my attention over the years was a negative and critical nature. Hmm. So it's a fault that I had allowed to just take over my conversation and my communication with people so naturally yeah. that I didn't even realize it until one day in Sunday school, there's such value in small group. <laughs> I remember, and oh, gosh, I wish I had written down um, this reference, but let no, I think it's Ephesians 4, 26, but don't quote me on that. Let no unwholesome mm. word come from your mouth, yeah. only that, that which lifts up and edifies. Oh, and it goes further, benefits those who listen. So maybe that critical nature did not do that. It did not benefit those <laughs> yeah. who listened. And 
Moses had a problem with his speech as well. Mm -hmm. He had a different speech problem. But it was something that I allowed mm -hmm. to just become part of my nature. Yeah. And without realizing it, probably had hurt people's feelings, had misrepresented God, and probably wrongly misrepresented myself mm -hmm. as a child of God. Yeah. Because that's not at all who God is. So let's take a look at two things mm -hmm. that we can, that we need to think about as far as transformation. And it's not, the because the fault, we don't want the fault to control us. Mm -hmm. We want to be in control. Rather, we want the spirit to be in control of right. that. Because it does take quite a bit of time. It takes discipline. It takes time, discipline. effort, practice. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so turn to Pro, uh, John, not Proverbs, John uh, 14. And we looked at 16 in one of the other weeks. Mm -hmm. A similar verse, 16, 7, and 8, talking about the Holy Spirit. But um, let's look at 14, 26. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, mm -hmm. will teach you all things and will remind you of everything. I love that because the older I get, I have problems remembering things. <laughs> um, he will remind you of everything I have said. Yeah. Now, we're going to go to the right and flip over because that's our teacher. <laughs> and then let's look at the text, 2 Timothy mm. 3. 16 and 17 and I just chuckle with this because this is one of the first scriptures my son memorized when he was little and it was all it says all scripture is God breathed and when he was little he just said it all scripture is God breathed oh just the cutest that so that's how I have to read it yeah <laughs> all scripture all scripture is God breathed and it's useful for teaching rebuking mm -hmm. oh that hard word correcting and training in what in righteousness so mm. that the man of God, in our case, woman of God, may be thoroughly equipped for what kind of work? Every good work. work. Yeah. So we have to take, we have to allow God's word to get into us. And it's, here's the thing, Kendra, it's more than going to church on Sundays. Mm -hmm. I love my pastor, but I have learned through my study of God's word on the other six days of the week yeah. that I put way too much responsibility of my spiritual maturity mm -hmm. on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. And we our, our tank should be filled up on Sunday or tapped yeah. off, not yeah. filled up, yeah. tapped off. So we have to allow God's word. And these words, rebuking, correcting, and training, they're not so fun. No, they're not fun and they're not natural. They're not fun and, and that, not natural at all. Yeah. But that's the only way that God was able to prick my heart mm -hmm. To, to call me out and say, you know what? Some of the things that you say aren't nice. Mm -hmm. Well, nobody wants to hear that. Or some of the things that you say are really critical. Right. And I found myself, even coming out of church on Sunday mornings when my tank had, tank had been topped off and yeah. I had had this worship experience with the Lord, complaining about the music. <laughs> it was too loud or it wasn't the right beat or... yeah. You know, or I've heard that sermon on Jonah so many times. He didn't teach me anything new. That was who mm -hmm. I was. And I don't like that person. Mm -hmm. And I had allowed that to get a hold of me. Yeah. And boy, did it keep me from living free. And Wendy, what I find interesting about your story is you had to be at a place of humility, right? To accept mm -hmm. those words. And so I would like to think that the time that you spent reading God's word and just sitting with him kind of prepared you for that correction. It did. And so it did. hopefully through reading God's word and studying this book in your words, right. it can kind of get us ready. Well, and going back to the very beginning of mm -hmm. knowing, trusting, and believing God. Right. That his, it's for our good. And this says it's for a good work. Mm -hmm. So the training is for a good work. Yeah. And we all want to do good works. We, we want to do good work. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, thank you, Wendy, for that teaching. Uh -huh. And thank you for preparing us for week five of study. Awesome. Everyone, we are just so grateful mm. for you. We're yeah. thankful that you're joining us and about to read chapter five. We have our last possibility profile. Right. That's going to be sent to you at the end of the week. So you can listen to it uh -huh. for your it's weekend. It's a finger two. Yes. And so mm -hmm. we're very excited for that. And everyone, we we're teaching... Wendy is teaching out of the Bible, and so it's something that we truly believe here at Proverbs 31, that when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. So have a wonderful week, everybody.